What's going on, everyone? Jeremy here from the recording. Just, just hear me out for a second, okay? Certainly, many people know that, you know, where my allegiances lie, uh, you know, in terms of the individual versus the corporation. But I think what's getting lost in that is I'm not doing a good enough job uh, still, um, you know, still respecting and giving appreciation for the amount of good work that Daily Wire has done. Now, there are individual decisions as a company that they've made that I do not like. Um, but I think that the work that they've done has still been very, very influential, very, very important. Uh, you know, at a time when conservative minded people, not just like hardcore conservative, just like even personal liberties people, Everyone, you know, it's easy to forget, but, you know, they gave Gina Carano a, a budget for a movie and she got to make a movie because of them. Uh, you know, Nick Searcy was in that movie, also a guy that's basically canceled in Hollywood. Uh, you have um, Cow Cowboy Cerrone, if this is, this is his last name right. Um, then they had the, the sportscaster that was fired for refusing the jab that they hired. Um, I, I think that these are all very, very good things. And that even if, you know, I'm not loving the way that this is all shaking out now, I think it's important to be fair and, and try to be more balanced. And that's why I put this in like a separate video. Um, sure, certainly people might get angry about it. Like I'm still, you know, Team Crowder. I don't love him releasing that phone call. Um, but... I think that what what's getting lost in all this is even if I don't like kind of the corporate nature of uh, Daily Wire, you know, my default is always to like defend my friends and defend people that I am friendly with. And sometimes that means I go, you know, I, I become too biased. And when you have this situation, you know, with, uh, the Daily Wire, I think that, you know, it's easy to forget, you know, that the Daily Wire is taking that money from these monthly Daily Wire Plus subscriptions and uh, producing a lot of content. You know, I liked um, the Gina Carano movie and you know what? They flew me out there to look at it or to be to meet Gina Carano in, in person. So, I mean, I think like without Daily Wire, I would never would have met her in person. Well, maybe eventually down the road, but I don't travel very often. Never been to Montana before. It was kind of a cool experience. Um, and, you know, also with the children's programming, right? Um, the, the, you know, the problem with so much of the content out there for kids is it's like indoctrinating, right? They've committed a large sum of money for content for parents uh, to be able to trust isn't like, you know, teaching their kids that they're 76 genders. Um, I think what is a woman uh, was pretty successful for them. It certainly was in terms of bringing new members to them based on the numbers, but also like that movie, that documentary became like a cultural phenomenon. Um, and it kind of, it almost broke into the mainstream. It started a lot of conversations um, you know, when you have like Joe Rogan talking about it, that's like kind of the next tier of the conservative bubble. So you have like the conservative bubble and then you have, um, uh, like the Joe Rogan bubble and then you have normies. Uh, maybe you have YouTube also included in that. Like, but you know, I think that, you know, do I like that Jordan Peterson tweeted out support for Steven, then deleted it? No. Um, do I like that the kind of the cold calculating business aspects of Daily Wire? No. But they've done a lot of good things. And, you know, they're not paying me to say this. Uh, but, you know, I see, I read your feedback, you know, and I see, I think that there's a lot of people, you know, who watch me that also watch a Daily Wire and they're like, bro, you're not being fair. Um, you know, you're, you're too slanted to one side. And I just think it's important to listen to your viewers and, you know, I still ride with Crowder. Okay. 
that's how but like i still enjoy content on daily where i don't like candace owens i think she's a, a legitimate liar and grifter but i mean like I don't have any issues with Brett Cooper or Matt Walsh. And Matt Walsh says things I disagree with. I'm sure I say things that he disagrees with. You know, Shapiro, you know, he's never really my cup of tea. But again, nothing personal against a guy. And I think he's done a lot of good work. You know, his, you know, campus debates uh, were like a viral sensation in 2016, 2017, 2018. And a lot of that stuff is why this channel, you know, kind of, um, spout, you know, grew up and spouted up, you know, in a lot of other channels, similar in the commentary space, you know, the, you Jordan, you know, Jordan Peterson to bring that up. Like, I don't like that. He deleted that tweet. They say they didn't tell him to delete that tweet. I suspect differently, but you know, it still doesn't erase all the good things that Jordan Peterson has done for young men seeking direction i mean young men had have had two kind of really popular role models in the in the sphere and it's like if i'm choosing between jordan peterson and andrew tate i'd rather they listen to jordan peterson um you know again even though there's kind of some cracks in his armor i just think that you know it's important to uh to acknowledge that the daily wire has done some really you know important work um really you know really good stuff so i think you know i i still like you know i just i still don't like you know maybe the response uh really but i i do think that both sides of this certainly could handle it better i just think you know as an independent creator i feel an affinity to the independent creator um and but I understand why maybe some of these people at the Daily Wear are coming out and defending it. First of all, maybe they feel thankful for the opportunity. Second of all, you know, they also signed these contracts and they must be fine with it. So, you know, I, I don't I don't really hold any ill will. I think that, you know, the kind of the coordinate coordinated go hard clapback from them. Um I think what, what that really says is clearly Steven Crowder struck a nerve with them. Um, clearly. But, you know, I still support what the Daily Wire is doing with, uh, you know, children's content, with movies. That superhero movie, the Hyperions was good. Um, Terror on the Prairie was good. Um, I think that there's any time there's, like, content out there that you know is like, okay, it's not going to be woke trash. It might not be the best movie I've ever seen in my life. But I, if, you know, as I'm getting older, it's like, I'd almost make that trade. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I, I understand. Um, it, it's like, oh, I just know this show's going to, it's like, oh, do I want to start a new show and see all the same modern tropes that we always see in modern programming? Like the perfectly diverse family unit and the, the, of course, it's got, you know, this X, Y, and Z representation, and it's got to have all this and that. And it's like they focus on that, and they don't have any time to make the show good. That happens so often in modern cinema. There's been good movies that I've seen come out that are modern. I thought The Black Phone was really, really good. If you haven't seen that, I would I would recommend, you know, watching that. Um, it's been out, It's probably out for rent now or streaming. But, you know, I think that, like, while I side with Steven, I, I kind of wish that they weren't fighting. I do think it's valuable that the contracts, you know, are out there and that it is concerning to see, you know, the, the kind of the straight pass through of penalties to employees. But I understand where Daily Wire is coming from. I do. They're running a business. It's like a cold hearted mechan you know, me mechanical thing, but that's why they make $10 million a month on daily wire plus subscriptions. I understand why people want to defend Steven Crowder, but like, here's the reality. He's going to crush it on his own. He may be experiencing some level of uncertainty right now or whatever the case may be. I don't know, but I, you know, he's going to crush it. He's going to, you know, the, the numbers, his revenue is going to be absolutely massive. Um, his mug clubbers, 
honestly, of all fan bases I've ever run into, maybe with the exception of K-pop, I have never seen more loyal fans. And so, you know, that's a true blessing uh, for Steven. And many of them have come over here and been really kind to me too. But, you know, I think that both of these companies or entities are, par- are, are forces for good. Uh, they just act in, in different ways. And so, no, this isn't me like, quote unquote, letting Daily Wear off the hook. But I think it's me being honest and saying like, look, I've made four or five videos supporting Steven. And, you know, while I don't agree with the way this stuff shook out, between the two of them, it doesn't erase all the good that Daily Wire's done. Whether or not you want to keep paying for their service and all that kind of stuff, that's up to the individual user. Um, You know, for me, I hope that they continue to, I hope that they deliver on everything that they said, the children's programming and all that stuff, because I think that they could do good work. Uh, And it's good that that stuff's out there. So, You know, I may not like the way they do business. They're very litigious. They're owned by a billionaire. But that doesn't mean what is a woman wasn't interesting, entertaining, and and culturally relevant. It doesn't mean that, you know, Ben Shapiro owning college kids isn't still funny to me. Uh, So, yeah, I just thought I'd be transparent here uh, because that's just being honest. So I hope... You'll stay. I hope, you know, the people that are here, you know, thank you everyone for joining my mailing list. Um, I think we're up to almost 13,000 people. So if you made it to the end of this video, there's going to be a link in the description. All you have to do is go to thequartering.com, put your email address in in the top here. Then it's going to say, wait, you must check your inbox and confirm your subscription. You go to your inbox and you get this email from me. This is, you know, subscribing to the list. Yes. Boom. You're done. And um, I've got a big project to announce. Uh, hopefully in the next couple of weeks and um, being able to contact you all in this manner is kind of step one. Hope you enjoyed this video. We'll talk to you again real soon.